What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out the new Pathfinder game. Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, the previous Pathfinder game sort of, I didn't, I didn't get that far into it, I'll be honest with you. Like it came out in a time where I was totally, I was buried in just like CRPGs. And so honestly, I didn't get a ton of time to play the previous game. Uh, I did the impressions video of it, but honestly, there's only so much you can glean from the first 35 minutes of like a 40 hour RPG, you know what I mean? And so anyways, when the first one came out, I think that I was stuck playing Path of Egg, not Path of Exile, I was playing Pillars of Eternity, a different POE. I was playing Pillars of Eternity, and I was playing the new Torment game, and like I was playing, you know, Tyranny, which to this day I think is probably one of the best RPGs ever made, and it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. So anyways, today we're going to dive on and spend about 25-30 minutes with the game and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list. Hopefully this will be a good primer. You can kind of take a look at the mechanics and figure out if it's something you wanted to go after. If after watching this video you did want to do that, uh, you can go down below in the description. I'll have a link for you that takes you to the Steam page so that you can wish list it for yourself. And also you'll find my Discord and my Twitch stream and all those other associated things. Uh, we can choose a storyline here. So apparently these ones are not available. What they've given me is kind of like a loose beta to sort of show off the game. And so all we have is the main storyline. So we'll go ahead and go with next. Uh, over here we've got a whole bunch of things that we can fiddle around with. It looks like this stuff kind of automatically shifts around. Uh, and so it looks like the core right here is going to be... Oh yeah, look at that. It like adjusts it downward. So I guess the normal difficulty is actually lower than the core Pathfinder difficulty. If you never played Pathfinder before, it's basically a game that came out right around the time that D&D 4.0 came out. D&D 4.0 was largely reviled. Pretty much everybody hated it except for miniature wargamers. Uh, and Pathfinder is basically more or less an expanded version of 3.5 D&D, which is much beloved, and so a huge chunk of the D&D community kind of shaved off, and Wizards of the Coast lost a lot of market share over that gamble. Uh, I respect the fact that they tried to do something different with 4th Edition, but at the same time, 4th Edition just didn't hit like an RPG to me. It felt like the roleplay really suffered by comparison to kind of, like, uh, the battles were cool. But it seemed like it was really focused on being a tabletop miniatures game rather than being a role-playing RPG. We'll put it on core difficulty for right now because, like, I'm no stranger to 3.5. I know 3.5. I've never played Pathfinder, but I know that they're very, very similar. So I assume it'll be fine. All right. So we get to choose what char Can we make a custom character here? Oh, we can make a custom character here. Very nice. All right, well, let's go through custom character generation because I think that's probably a smart decision. First up, we've got to go ahead and pick a portrait. Wrath of the Righteous has a few new portraits, but it looks like most of them are going to be imported from Kingmaker, which was the previous game. Uh, this guy looks vaguely... Actually, let's do a dwarf, dude. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do a dwarf. Absolutely. I love dwarves. Dwarves are my favorite. They've been my favorite ever since in 3.5. I read a little snippet that was inside of the player handbook. Um, that I'll talk about a little bit later. I'm gonna go the cleric because it's my favorite class. We can be an angel fire apostle. Use the power of good to avoid violence and cleanse maladies and evil creatures with blinding flames. We have the crusaders who are the militant arm of the church. We have the devil bane priest. And so apparently the devil brain or the devil bane priest. They have battlefield tactics to banish demons. So they're kind of like exorcists, I guess. We have the ecclesiathurge. Uh, a crusade-minded cleric who trained intensively to learn proper battle... Wait, hold on. Is it actually shifting here? There we go. Eschewing physical armor for protection via the strength of your faith. They focus on miracles. Okay. The Herald Caller. Unlike crusaders or paladins who charge headlong into battle, Herald Callers are adept at calling powerful outsiders to aid their brethren in battle. Okay, so I assume it's some kind of summoner, maybe, or some kind of, like, spirit caller, possibly? We have a priest of balance down here. Life and death are two sides of the coin. Clerics who do not give preference to either side can compensate both types of energy in themselves and become priests of balance. Okay. Well, I like the idea of being a crusader, so I think that's what we're going to be. We're going to be a crusader. Can we go deep? What happens if we go detailed? Oh, wow. Okay, so detailed, we can actually, like, get up in here and we can start, like, kind of slotting things around. So we have knowledge of arcana, which means that we're going to have the ability to identify magical things and know magical facts. We have knowledge of the world. Uh, we have persuasion. And then we have knowledge of our lore, religion. Uh, so these are going to be for skill checks in these realms. So if somebody 
I guess so, if somebody hypothesizes something that's loosely based on the magical systems of the world, Knowledge Arcana will allow us to agree with them or, like, understand them. Same for, like, the world, basically, which is, like, geographical people and civilizations and stuff like that. Uh, we also have kind of lore over here of our own religion, which it's probably a good thing for a cleric to have knowledge of their own religion. That's probably... I don't think you're much of a cleric if you don't have that. All right, well, we can close that down. Let's go next. Uh, so we've already picked Dwarf, and we've already gone Crusader. So now we've got to choose our background. Uh, we could be a craftsman. So this is where our character came from, how he grew up. Uh, we can be a craftsman. We can be a noble. Oh, there's actually varied types of craftsmen that we could be. Well, we're a dwarf. So, like, I, I feel like, you know, a miner is not too hard. A miner or a smith is not too hard of an extrapolation since dwarves tend to put value on both of those handcrafted labors. But it looks like there's a number of other things we could potentially be as well. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I'll probably go with this one right here, though. And then we get to apply our stats. So these stats are largely more or less the same as what you would expect from playing D&D 3.5. Uh, we have strength, which is how hard we hit and our chance to hit in melee. We have dexterity, which is usually our range chance to hit. Has to do with a lot of stealth and things of that nature. Uh, basically, your hand-eye coordination, everything associated with it. Constitution, which is how sturdy you are personally. Uh, so how resistant to disease and wounds and bleeding. How much it takes to make you tap out. Uh, we have our intelligence over here, which is how smart we are. We have our wisdom, which is probably one of our core stats as a cleric. It's going to affect our spell casting and whatnot. Uh, wisdom, so intelligence is being able to tell somebody that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is the ability to know that it doesn't go in a fruit salad. You see what I mean? And then you've got charisma over here, which is our ability to talk and reason and our ability to connect with people, which obviously dwarves are found to be a little bit lacking when it comes to kind of dealing with people. They're short-fused. Uh, since we're going to be fighting out in the world, I do think having like a 14 in melee is probably a good idea. Dexterity doesn't have to be that great, because if this follows the clerics from D&D, we're going to be wearing heavy armor. So like dexterity, we can sort of neglect a little bit. I think a 14 is fairly safe in constitution right there. Uh, I think it's a good place to start. As far as wisdom goes, we're going to want that to be like a 16 or like a 17. We want that to be pretty good because for every two points we put in, we get a bonus to the dice rolls that we're going to be going for. Uh, Pathfinder uses a d20 system. If you don't know what that means, it means you roll a 20-sided die to do anything. Uh, and in this case, let's, let's give you an example just in case you're a layman and you've never played a tabletop game before. Uh, you're struck by a blow. That blow has a chance to knock you off of your feet and onto your ass. Uh, you have to make a constitution roll to resist the fact that it's going to knock you down. You roll a d20, and let's say that you have to roll higher than a 10 in order to avoid being knocked from your feet. Uh, you would roll your d20, and you would add a 2 to it, and whatever you roll is your score. So obviously having a higher modifier over here increases your chances of getting through more and more difficult skill checks. Uh, so this represents something we're like actively good at. I'm going to even out my charisma real fast because I think like having negatives is not something that I've ever really liked. I'm always a person that kind of takes a standard spread and like modifies it a little bit. Uh, but then we've got a few points to play around with here. I think it's not a bad idea to go after maxing out wisdom and being really, really wise. Uh, the other alternative is that we could put some points into strength and constitution to make ourselves able to stand in the line a little bit better uh, so that we can heal people effectively. Since we're a crusader and we're role-playing that, I am going to bump up my strength a little bit. I think I'm going to bump up my con ever so slightly just in case I want to take that up to a 16 and get the plus 3 at some point. And then we'll see if we can get to 18 right there. And that's actually that's a pretty baller character for D&D. That's a pretty good character that really doesn't have any weak points to strike at. Uh, and so I'll take it. Uh, over here, we've got our skill points. Uh, so skill points are going to be additional modifiers that are added to those dice rolls that I was talking about previously. Uh, so in the case of athletics right here, to give you an example, we would make a strength check to lift like a big boulder to free a civilian that had been trapped by it. Uh, we would take our strength check plus our strength modifier. So we'd roll a d20, add our strength modifier, and then we would add this modifier right here with the points that we've put in. And, you know, it would give us a pretty solid chance, actually, based on this stuff, to lift that boulder. I don't think we're going to need most of this stuff. We have lore and nature for some reason. Or we're getting a bonus for lore and nature. Perception is good. Persuasion is nice, but we're not really built that way. 
Uh, I would say that having like a knowledge arcana right here would probably be a good idea. So we have athletics and knowledge of arcana. Uh, these right here are going to be our, the marks that indicate these are core skills for our character. Uh, so we'll take those and we're all out of points right there. Uh, over on this side, we've got our feats. So feats are like perks. If you've ever played Fallout, uh, feats are effectively perks. They're things that you can just do based on your class, your race, and your job selections. I'm going to kind of go through these and figure out which ones I want to take. Since we're making a classic cleric, I'm going to go for the simple choice and just go with heavy armor so that we can wear plate mail. And then we'll move on to what's next. We get to choose what god we want to go after. So we have Abadar, who is the god of law, effectively. Uh, and so it looks like just about anybody can take him that's lawful. We have Asmodeus, that's all about kind of neutral and evil alignments, the king of hell. We have atheism, which means we don't believe in anything, which seems like a bad place to start for a cleric. Uh, we have Kalistra, who is apparently the goddess of lust and revenge. Okay, we have Caden Kalian, the god of alcohol, bravery, and freedom. Well, I gotta, I gotta go with that one, dude. The, the god of liquor and freedom sounds great to me. And then we have the ability to either channel positive negative or positive energy or negative energy here. Okay, so it's like an ability. Uh, this is effectively turn undead, uh, from what I'm reading in the what I'm reading in this over here. And then we got to choose what domain. So this is kind of like the magical schools that our caster will specialize in. Um, you choose what domains you're strong in. I would say that goodness is probably a good thing for us to take, or strength possibly. Since we're a crusader, I think that strength sounds pretty appealing. But also, um, good seems like a pretty pretty rad thing to take as well. But I'll go with strength for right now. Uh, weapon focuses over here. We get to pick a weapon that we're better with. Uh, we could also take martial weapons proficiency, which would allow us to get access to a lot more weapons. Uh, as of right now, I don't know actually what we're proficient in at the moment. I would assume nothing. Uh, so... I'll probably take martial weapons proficiency just so we have access to more weapons that we can play around with. This gives me access to like flails and picks and hammers and stuff like that. I could take the weapon focus and I could get the proficiency as like a bonus to it basically, but I would only be able to use that one weapon and like, you know, I think thematically there's a number of weapons we could take. Uh, we've got to choose our alignment. This is a tough one to explain to people while we're kind of like in the heat of the moment, uh, but anyways. It's split up into different pie slices, and I'll probably cut this video a little longer so that we can see more gameplay since I'm spending so much time in the character creator. But we've got lawful good. Lawful good that means that with respect to the law, you respect the law, and with regards to the struggle between good and evil, you tend to favor good. Neutral means that you don't really care about the law either way, but you tend to align yourself with the forces of good. Chaotic good means that you don't care about the law at all as long as it accomplishes the good. Uh, chaotic neutral means that you're just chaos unbridled. You kind of are a creature of whimsy. You basically go wherever the wind takes you. Uh, you've got lawful neutral, which means you tend to favor the law, but you don't get involved with struggles between good and evil. You don't really care about who wins there. Uh, lawful evil means that you do care about the law, and you tend to use that towards evil gains. Uh, neutral evil means that you don't really care about the law, and you tend to apply yourselves towards evil stuff. Chaotic evil means that you are real, real evil. You're, you're a pretty bad guy, as far as that goes. I'll probably go Chaotic Good, because that's kind of the classic anti-hero role. Alright, so let's see what we can do with our character here. We've got a number of faces we can play around. I like that guy right there. He looks kind of grim. Uh, we've got a number of skin tones here that we can select between. I'll probably just go with the default. This one looks a little jaundiced for me, so I'll probably go for that right there. We've got hairstyles we can play around with. I tend to like the flowing locks, although is that a braid right there? Yeah, I'll go with that right there. That looks good. And then we're a dwarf, so obviously we've got to have like a respectable beard here. Like a beard that makes people say, yep, this man plays a dwarf. I like that one right there, so I think I'm going to go with that. And then we're going to have our hair be black so that it matches our portrait. Uh, we can choose our primary colors over here for our outfit. I'm always partial to kind of like greens and whites. Uh, that tends to be sort of the... The colors earth tones tend to be things that I'm a fan of. So we can go with that right there. I mean, if we really wanted to diversify, we could go for like a green right there. And then we could go for kind of a white outline. Yeah, I think that looks okay. I'll take care of it. And then we've got voices. Together we stand. Yeah, dude, that sounds like the uh, that sounds like the, the stereotypical dude. We cannot be defeated. There we go. We'll go with brave. 
And then we've obviously got to have a good dwarvish name. Something with lots of consonants, like Offnar. That sounds good. And then apparently we got to choose our birthday and our birth month. I don't really have any preference here. So we'll go with the 12th of Frost. That sounds good. And there's our total character sheet right there. Let's play the game. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this? But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't he be carted off somewhere else like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary or an accommodating ditch? Apparently, we've got a spell effect that's stuck on screen right now. Little, not, not ideal, not, not crazy ideal. We'll see if it goes away. Make room, everyone. Step back. Now, what's the matter? What happened to him? Hmm. The wound looks nasty. Who did this to him? That escalated quickly. You're like, hmm, this situation is a predicament. Who did this? <laughs> Apparently, this man has a sentimental attachment to my beardiness. Demons, prelate. We found her barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. The walls, you say? The enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. We must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take his weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. He can get his things back after the festival. I've played this game before. I've played enough tabletop RPGs to see exactly where this is going. We're going to get taken to the infirmary. The town is going to get attacked during the festival, and I'm going to have to find my weapons. I'm calling it. If I'm wrong, I'm... Ooh. Leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy. Heal his wounds. Dwarves don't make sounds like e or ah when we're wounded, so I'm gonna grit my teeth in silence. My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendelev. You there? Yes, you. Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful. Go and get Terendelev. Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. I'll get her. Terendelev. Has anyone seen Terendelev? See, sela has got my back right here. I like Sela. This lady was like, yeah, I don't want to help a commoner. This lady was like, I'm going for aid immediately. Be quick about it before it's too late. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. I'm a crusader. I came to fight demons. Oh, Iomade saved me from green recruits. They come without planning. Without preparation, and they die before they even see their first real battle. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at the utter waste of it all. My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor man. He has been through enough already. Go on, I'll take care of him. <laughs> all right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that. So I shall defer to your wisdom, but be on your guard. I've been informed he was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls, and the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I. Not the defenders of this city. Grudging grip of pain. Cast off the veil of suffering flesh. Let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. 
After that spellcasting speech, I don't really know what to say, so I'm just gonna be like, Thank you! I appreciate you healing my horrible kidney wounds. I accept your thanks, but my work is not yet done. Uh, who are you? My name is Terendalev. I am the protector of the city. Are you actually a dragon? You don't believe me. Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> mm. Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. I like how they actually recorded a melodious laugh in between there. Like, with a lot of tabletop RPG, like, conversions into video games, like, they'll read the actual written script, like, the talking parts, but then with all, like, the flavor stuff in between, like, the grunts and the groans and the sighs that are indicated by a text, like, they ignore that and they just jump straight to the next part. It creates, like, a break in immersion, I guess, for me, so I like that they took the effort to actually do that. I do not know yet, and that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength, but only time will allow you to heal fully. Apparently, I was hit by an unknown weapon. Everybody else is having festival day, and I got kicked in the face with a morgul boot. Certainly, but be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendalev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. It's true. One time I got, I got a, a machete embedded in my face. And I didn't go to the hospital. Instead, I went to Disneyland and it healed right up. Alright, so I've been given control of my character. Uh, I like the- oh, cool. So if you move farther than a certain distance, he sprints into like- he changes into like a sprint stance. Okay. Alright, fair enough. And we've been given free access to the camera for right now. I don't know exactly who I'm supposed to be interacting with. But I'd like to get on to the action. That's what I want. I want to beat some demons down in classic form. Uh, there's Aravashnial. Who are you? I have a feeling something terrible is going to happen. Well, it is a tabletop RPG, so obviously we can't all... There's no such thing as a tabletop RPG where everybody just lives happily, pays their mortgage, raises some kids, and dies peacefully. That's just... It, it's not how these things work. Looks like I can go up on this training dummy right here. Yeah, let's hit the training dummy, dude. I gotta show off my dwarvish strength. There it is. Oh, another dwarf is challenging me right now, dude. Are you challenging me, bro? Apparently, I hit the mannequin, so that's cool. Apparently, I've gotta drink a drink and throw a dart. Alright, so let's find a drink around here. Uh, this looks like a place where I can get a beverage. Oh, there's a little person right here. Who are you? Are you a halfling or are you a little kid that's drinking heavily? I can't tell. What about Sela? Does she want to say anything to me? Yes, Terendalev did indeed help me. Is there anything I can interact with around here? You can hold down tab to interact with stuff. So here's the dart board over here. Let's go throw a dart at it and see how that goes. I assume they're just teaching me how to do like melee and ranged attacks. Yeah, throw a dart at that thing. Get it. I'm pretty good at darts, bro. I'm, I'm a pretty solid darts player. Did I win? It looks like it hit the middle. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, some shadow glitches right there with the beta. Why do they always have to do this during Maypole Festival Day? Like, why can't they just do it on any other average Thursday where I've got to go to work, you know what I mean? Thank <laughs> you. 
That dragon was not nearly as baller as I expected that dragon to be. Discari's here. Discari himself. Blimey! One minute we had a dragon, the next, bam, she was gone. What are you gonna do? Fight or flee? If flee is your plan, let me help you out. I've got a scroll here with a good protective spell. Uh, what's the situation in the city? Who knows? Everything's on fire, crashing down around our ears. Place is crawling with demons. Looks like a whole army attacked the city. We're sitting ducks. Give me a weapon. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow. Bro. Gun. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord, even. A crossbow? I have no dexterity. No. To get eaten now. Oh, dude. Oh, no. We are not playing to my strengths right now. A mortal gnat snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Why is it always, I always fall into a pit on festival day, man. Why can't I just have one festival day where I don't lose altitude? That's all that I want. I just want to remain at sea level. The silver dragon, Terendeleb, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Well, see, the way that she messed up is that she did her transformation in combat. She should have turned into a dragon like. That's like the DBZ thing. Like, they always let the other guy transform instead of attacking him while he's transforming. Like, she made the classic mistake and her enemy just attacked her while she was transforming. It's a bad look. Here I am in the bottom of a pit. Surrounded by fungus. Uh, is there anything interactable around here? Let's take a look. Nothing. Offnar doesn't have a whole lot of things that are catching his notice. Uh, there's a dead guy over here, which is really sort of unfortunate. I knew Sela was going to be a character. Oh, holy mother of Apparently, she's pinned down by weighty boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? I feel them all right. One say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendalev healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Yep. Let's go ahead and do an athletics check. We didn't put all them points into strength and athletics for nothing. Let's do it. Wah! Lift with your leg. Yeah, you got to get the pump. Yeah. Nice. Summoning all your strength, you lift up the rocks to free the wounded woman from the rubble. And then we take, like, if there was the DM here right now, I'd be like, I also take 30 seconds to stand there flexing afterwards and just showing off my bulging biceps and rippling frame. You know, my arms looking like bags of undulating, you know, vas vascular snakes. There you go. You gotta, you gotta get the description right. Oh, damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh, well. I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm Anevia Tirabade of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. Well, I'm Sila. Paladin by the grace of Iomade, I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendeb and fight demons. And well, I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendelev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. 
It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald, with the goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabres will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? Mm, my name's Ofnar. Good to meet you. Now, tell us all about yourself. Right now, we're at the bottom of a chasm. I don't know if this is the time for... Alright, well, first I woke up, then I had toast. This is enough for now. We don't have time to be swapping life stories. We need to find a way out of here. There we go. Anivia's being a realist right now. Uh, now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far. Only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. To summarize, there are three of us with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. I mean, we've got a paladin and a cleric. That's a pretty classic combo for just, like, wrecking face. We've got our bases covered. I think we'll be all right. All right, so let's take these two. It uses the same classic controls that you'd expect from any CRPG. You just rubber band box people, and then you can move them around. Uh, we'll take a look around, see if there's anything here that we can possibly loot. Yeah, this goods crate is a good idea, in my opinion. Looks like we've got a flail inside of there, we've got a cloak, and we've got torches. Okay. We'll take those. Uh, let's go over to the inventory menu down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And I got to get that equipped. Like, I'm just, I'm not good with the stuff that they gave me. It looks like we can have four different weapon sets. I assume that these are going to be, like, supplementary weapons. It looks like our weight is actually tracked, which normally for RPGs, they don't do that. I'm going to wear the cloak, dude. Hopefully it's not cursed. Oh, the cloak didn't show up, and neither did my, my super awesome flail. Weak, dude. Weak. I guess I can put that in my offhand so that I can see good. The torch showed up. She's got a sword and board, so we don't want to give her much else. She's already got a bow. What is that? Terendalev's scale. Oh, we took a scale from the dragon's body. Oof, that's opportunist. All right. Not sure if it's something that I would have risked, but, like, go for it, man. Dragon scales probably have some kind of cumulative value. Who are you? with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... when... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... naively it now seems that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev, I can't wrap my head around it. Mmm, who is this guy? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. You want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? Yay, new friends. Uh, let's go ahead and get moving. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack, only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. Uh. Alright. Oh, she's bleeding. Oh, never mind. She's, like, slightly wounded. Do I have a magic spell that I can cast on her to, like, fix that? So it looks like we can enlarge someone. I can also bless people. That'll increase their hit chance. But it looks like actually most of my spells are not for healing. Do I have a spell book around here? I do have a spell book. Interesting. 
Okay, so we're probably going to want to, like, get Cure Light Wounds in here somewhere. That'd probably be a smart idea. It actually kind of looks like I can only have one spell for right now slotted on into my spell book. So we've got our enlarged person, and then we've got... What does enlarged person do? It gives them a plus two size bonus. Gotcha. Okay, so it just makes you, like, bigger. That's pretty much all that it does. Okay, well, it is what it is. We've got to rest in order for me to get that back. I assume that... This might be the key for resting. Actually, I don't know what that key is right there. There it is. We got. Oh, we cannot. Okay. You must gather your party before venturing forth. All right. Well. Oh yeah. We gotta loot the dead guy too. Dead guy. Let me get your stuff. Uh, he's got a knife. It's a masterwork knife. So that's pretty cool. Whoever made's probably proud of themselves. Ew, dude. There's giant centipedes. Slay them. There you go. We're just gonna go all out melee for right now and just like hope for the best. Are they gonna auto target or do I have to like manually do it? Oh, she got sneak attack. Nice. So it's automatically factoring in that bonus. So she must be a rogue. Uh, she gets extra damage for attacking something that's already engaged. Uh, we've got armor over here. We've got a little bit of money. And we've got a bottle of oil. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I am going to I am gonna throw on this armor because I am remarkably nude right now. Like, remarkably and obviously nude. That's going to give us one armor class. Okay. Sounds good. Let's keep moving. Hello. Ooh, that's a big bug right there. Yeah, go ahead and stab that thing on up, dude. My flail still isn't rendering. Maybe I can try to get my flail to render here. It's bothering me. I want my... Where's my flail at, dude? It looks like I'm punching them with my bare hand, but I know that I'm not. What if I put it into a different slot? Can I have that then? I mean, we're getting the bonus from the flail. It's just not showing up right now, but that's one of those little bugs that I hope is resolved before the game releases. We also had some issues with the shadows during that cinematic when the dragon was getting attacked. Make me feel a little bit concerned. We'll battle our way through here, do the standard fair RPG stuff, killing monsters. Oh, apparently I gave them an attack of opportunity. That's my bad. I didn't mean to. Maybe I should just let them kind of auto-battle on their own instead of fiddling with things. Looks like we killed them, so we're okay. It looked like I was hobbled for a second. I thought my guy was limping. Uh, we've got something over here. Looks like maybe... Oh, a corpse. Okay. That's exactly what I want to find right about now next to a huge pile of bugs. There you go. Get on in there. Perfect. All right. So let's see if we can loot this guy right here. This has got a forked tongue, which apparently is a crafting reagent. I can live with that. Sounds like a plan. Uh, we've taken a little bit of damage out here. I think we're going to have to rest soon. Yeah, wipe out everything you can, I guess. I'm trying to look at these attack animations here. They look okay. They don't look too bad. The sound effects are nice. I definitely think the sound effects have like a beefy weightiness to them. Uh, but then again, the attack animations, I think... Hey, there's more people over here. Hold on, I gotta check and see what's down this way. It's my it's my only option. I'm I'm the kind of player where I can't just like go down one path and not look and see what's down the other path. And see, there was a dead guy over here. There's another dead one over on this side, and I need to know if he's got anything rad in his pockets. Uh, he's got a mace right there. Got some bracers of armor plus one. Okay. 25 bucks and it looks like some cure light wounds potions. Well. I think the cure light wounds potions are a really really good plan Oh, she was trying to t pose on a fool right here some frame rate issues inside the menu right here for undisclosed reasons I don't know if it's due to the lighting Hey, my mace shows up. Well, I guess I'm equipping a mace then I, I don't see any other way around it uh, Use the potion heal yourself up and then use that potion to heal yourself up I would have liked it if we had had you know a cure light wounds on our character from the beginning. Luckily, there doesn't seem to be any stutters or any frame rate issues inside the greater game. It's mostly just on menus, and it looks like during some of the cinematics, I guess. Uh, so that's that's okay. It's tolerable, I suppose. In we go. Freshly good to go and ready to meet new friends. That guy's got spiders coming out of his back. I don't like that. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. When do I... Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. Uh, demons are wrecking people's faces. 
If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield mace. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabres. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. All right, so what are you doing here? It's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. <laughs> it's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. All right. Well, let's go ahead and find the sword. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What? You want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So be it. There you go. Uh, this is Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, and we've just kind of done the beginning portions of the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're about out of time for the length of videos that I tend to do, but I tried to cut it a little bit longer so that you could see just sort of how things are going. Thus far, I'm interested. I'm definitely in the mood for a new CRPG. Uh, it does look like there's some minor graphical issues coming up with the shadows and then also with the rendering of objects and kind of the frame rate inside of menus. The voice acting is nothing to write home about, but, like, it's passable. It has its good moments and its bad moments thus far. I mean, it's typical campy fantasy game voiceovers. I don't know. Like, I don't expect... Like, Firewatch level miracles out of games that have like 80 trillion lines of recorded dialogue, you know what I mean? Uh, so, anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today, up on the chopping block, we had Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Tomorrow, it will likely be something else. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. Hi, do, and take care, everybody.